my name is Rachel and I am here with my January wrap up. I managed to read 12 books in January and I'm pretty excited about them. Um, I did a pretty good job of meeting several of my goals. I read a couple that I owned. I read several new releases and I just got a lot of reading done and I am pretty happy with how things turned out in January. So let's get to the books. First off was an arc that I received and that was the History of Wolves. I gave this three out of five stars. This really is a um, kind of a dark story about a teenage girl who really is kind of a loner and she ends up connected with the family that moves in next door and becomes a nanny for their child and then as she's getting closer to this mother and son pair she realizes that something in the family is not quite right and if she doesn't act uh, correctly the child's life could be at stake. And again, this is kind of a somber book. It was, I wouldn't go so far as to say it was depressing, but it definitely wasn't uplifting. Um, but it did make me think a lot and I did enjoy reading it. And again, I gave it three out of five stars. Next up, I read the sixth volume of Miss Marvel. I can't remember now what the title is, but I'll put a picture up. And I absolutely love this one. Um, as it's, as the series started to merge with the Marvel Universe more, I felt like I probably wasn't going to like it as much because I haven't read any other Marvel comics um, and it just seemed to kind of get really bleak but I absolutely love this volume. If you haven't read this um, you should know that the main character is of Muslim faith and I love that aspect of this book because it's not like a focus. It's not like about a Muslim person if that makes sense it's just you know it, it's kind of there and different elements are added in just based on her life especially when dealing with her brother lately and his new wife and the expectations of her parents I just really like that aspect of it but she's also just a normal teenager who just happens to be a superhero and I just love all the combinations I think it's a really entertaining uh, storyline uh, but this one really picked up we got back to the root of Kamala trying to be both superhero and normal teenager and I really really enjoyed this one. I gave it five out of five stars. Next up is I Hate Everyone Except You. This was by Clinton Kelly. This was another arc that I read and I gave this one three out of five stars. I was expecting to like this a little bit more. Um, I've seen Clinton Kelly on TV two different shows now. Uh, the first one was What Not to Wear and the second one is The Chew. I've seen that a couple times and he's got kind of a sassy but typically positive um, sense of humor that I tend to enjoy but I again I think this book took on more of a pessimistic tone and I just I don't know it wasn't exactly what I was expecting and I was kind of hoping it to be a little bit funnier it was very good if you like Clinton Kelly I think you're gonna like this um, several of the stories were very very funny but again, some of them weren't as funny as I was hoping they would be, and they seemed just a little bit more pessimistic than I was looking for. Next up, I read an ebook that I purchased on Amazon. It was very, very short, and it was, um, I think it was 33 Steps on uh, Huga. So the title of this book was called How to Huga, and I really enjoyed reading it. It was very concise and to the point. Uh, it mentioned things that you could consider to create a cozy atmosphere in your house, such as the lighting and the organization, and even easy things that you can do and I am so excited to give some of these a try. Um, I really like this idea of kind of this cozy, comfortable living space so I'm looking forward to trying these. I gave this one four out of five. Next up I read Losing It. This had been on my TBR for a while and I finally got to it. Um, I thought, well I don't think this book was at all what I was expecting. Um, it opens with this girl who is hoping to lose her virginity. She hooks up with this guy that she likes and they're kind of getting into the swing of things and then she just freezes and makes this really weird excuse and now she's totally embarrassed and it turns out that the guy she almost slept with is her new teacher in college so a lot of drama but I, I honestly I thought this one was a lot funnier than what I thought it would be if that makes sense so I thought it was pretty entertaining I did think it was a little bit like cheesy in some points uh, but overall it was kind of a fun read I'm not 100% sure at this point if I will carry on with the series I think there are possibly two more books in this one now and I I'm just not sure if I'm going to continue uh, but I did give this one three out of five stars next up I read The Radius of Us and this was a five star read for me I absolutely love this book uh, this focused on 
just real people, I felt like. I mean, they actually don't exist, but it just felt so real, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, and I wasn't really expecting that much from this book either, so it really just blew me out of the water. Um, it focuses on a girl who has been uh, assaulted in kind of a, a mugging incident, and she is pretty much traumatized, and she now has panic attacks. And that's kind of like the main thing in her life right now. She's struggling to get over this fear. And the only person around who she feels comfortable with and who uh, can kind of calm her down is this boy that everybody else is kind of afraid of because he is an immigrant and he um, has, has had this really rough trip through Mexico to get to the U.S. and he's not trying to sneak in. He just kind of surrenders himself at the border with his young brother saying they need asylum because they are fear uh, they're fearing for their lives in their native uh, El Salvador I think is where they're from and since the brother is underage a minor he is taken into uh, like a children's facility for immigrants but uh, this boy is 18 and therefore he is being detained. However, this wealthy this wealthy couple in uh, the main character, the main female character's neighborhood decides to adopt him. So that's how they're in the same area. And he's struggling with his, um, his reality of having to possibly go back to El Salvador if he's deported and what's going to happen to his brother. And she's struggling with all these anxiety and they just kind of come together and really kind of support each other and help each other through these like rough times. And I just loved it. I thought it was amazing. Again, I was super surprised and I just loved that it was it was, I just felt like it was a lot deeper than what I thought it would be and it's just so realistic. Teenagers these days have so many issues going on that people can't necessarily see on the outside just like these characters and I just loved it. I already purchased it for our school library and I'm so excited to recommend it to the kids. Next up I read Modern Mindfulness and I love this book. Um, it really breaks down how you can be mindful in your everyday life. A lot of times you hear things with meditation and mindfulness about like spending time sitting, uh, doing these meditations for like hours on end. And you hear about these people who go on these religious treks through the Middle East or Asia and spend time with monks meditating, but most of us can't give up our daily lives to do that. So I love that this book was really practical. Each chapter focused on a really important skill and then they give you 10 different um, easy meditations that you can do on the go. Things you can do during your commute or throughout your day and I just really love the practicality of it and I bought myself a hard copy of this because it was an arc that I read and I'm planning to read through it again at a slower pace and implement some of the uh, suggestions they have. Next up I got an arc, an e-arc of the new Casey West novel and I was so so excited. I ended up reading this within like 24 hours. Um, it's called By Your Side and it features two characters who maybe uh, have some preconceived notions about each other and end up locked in the library together over a long weekend. And once they start talking and communicating, they realize that maybe they didn't really understand the other person and they slowly are kind of falling in love for e with each other. But then something major happens and just kind of turns the whole book on its side. So it was it kept me interested. I love Casey West. I love the romance. And in this one, again, it features uh, a character who has an anxiety disorder and has panic attacks. And I just think that's so important to get out there that people can see that um, anxiety issues and mental health problems are a real thing and that it doesn't mean you can't have a normal life. And I just absolutely loved it. I gave it five out of five and I actually just bought it today at our school's book fair. So I'm super excited to own this one. Next up, I finally finished The Row. Technically I started this back in December, but I just kind of got pushed aside between the arcs that I was reading and all the other things that I was getting into. It just got pushed to the side. So I finally this month sat down and finished it and I really enjoyed it. Um, the premise of this and I did mention this in a new release video a while back but the premise of this book basically is that um, this girl's father has been in jail on death row actually for most of her um, teenage life for being a serial killer basically he's accused of murdering several women in their neighborhood and he has um, he's told her he's innocent, he didn't do it, he didn't do it, and they're trying to go through all of his appeals, and then when his last appeal is rejected, he tells the daughter that he actually did do it, 
When she freaks out, he retracts it and says he was just trying to help her move on for when he is executed. So she spends the rest of the book trying to investigate to see if the dad really committed these crimes or not. Um, there is a boy that comes in who is actually the son of the police chief that arrested the father. And I just really, really enjoyed that relationship and the, the plot development throughout. And it was very suspenseful. I thought it was very, very good. I gave it four out of five stars. Next up, I listened to His Bloody Project as an audiobook and I really, really liked it. First of all, it is set in uh, like Highland, Scotland. So I really enjoyed listening to the accents. Second of all, it reads like um, almost like a nonfiction account of a real crime. It, it is all revolving around this uh, triple homicide committed by a neighbor in this old Scottish Highland community and you get accounts from like the police, from witnesses, and you get like a direct account from the person accused and his memoir that he wrote while he was in jail. And then you get the court documents. And again, it's all presented as if it really happened. I mean, and there's several times where I'm like, wait, this isn't real, right? This is all fiction and it is, but it's just presented in such a way that you just completely believe that this happened. And um, while I wish there was a little bit more closure at the end, I do like that they kind of left it open for interpretation. I am absolutely dying for one of my friends to read this so that we can talk about it though because I just have some things to say about it that are kind of spoilery so I need somebody to read it so I can talk about it. But I enjoyed it. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. And I read the book for uh, my school's book club this month. We're meeting tomorrow actually and it is Between Shades of Grey and I've had this on my shelf again for a long time. I've heard it was wonderful but I had never picked it up. So I was super excited that we were reading it for book club and I could read it. And it was so good. It was so good. Um, and the thing I loved about this is you get so many books about World War II, but you rarely get books from new perspectives. And this one was for me. Um, this followed a family from Lithuania that was displaced when Stalin uh, came in and wanted those families out. And um, they were treated horribly. They were herded onto these like cattle trains and hauled out of their homes and then they were sold off as slaves. Um, this particular story focuses on a family that was taken into Siberia and they had to work on these uh, like communal farms that basically gave all of their food over to the government and it just kept getting worse and more sad and just horrific and then at the end you find out that like I mean these things really did happen obviously but that all of these people were basically never allowed to speak of this so this that's the reason this is an untold story that we haven't heard about it much they literally were not allowed to speak about it so it was such an interesting twist to the whole world war ii scenario where you hear so much about the holocaust and the jewish people with hitler you don't hear too much about uh situations with uh, Russia and Stalin or other areas so I always love when we get a different perspective in a World War II story and that was definitely this and I gave it five out of five stars and I cannot wait to read another Ruta Sepetis book. And the last one that I just barely finished in time I listened to this one and it was Hot Six by Janet Ivanovich. I was super sad though because halfway through it I realized that uh, I got the abridged version on my phone and it didn't really say it on there so I just assumed it was the regular version but it was the abridged. I, I feel like this rating is kind of unfair because I feel like uh, the whole point of those books is that they're funny and I feel like the abridged version cut out a lot of like the little silly things that are usually really funny in those books but the plot line was just like all the rest. I absolutely love Morelli in that series and Ranger. I love both the guys in that series so I enjoyed it but um, again I kind of I'm just really sad now that I had the abridged version because now that I just read the plot I don't want to go back and read it. I feel like I'd rather move on and read something else but it is what it is. So I got through Hot Six, which was one of the goals I had for this year on my list, uh, my alphabetical list to get through. So I'm happy about that. And that put me at number 12 for the month. So those are the books that I read this month. If you read any great books this month, please list them down below. I'd love to hear about them. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye for now.